Every once in a while, you're gonna to wanna to use a different version of Python than the one we just set up or your default system one. So what I wanna do is go through how to do that in updating our virtual environments accordingly. It's not really that complicated, but it is something that's worth checking out. So let's go ahead and go into downloads. And then we wanna download for Windows. You're gonna select Windows. And I'm gonna be using Python 3.7 because I do not have it on my system. Uh, and I have a 64-bit system, so I'm going to use 64-bit executable installer. And I'll run through the installation here. In this case, I'm not going to add it to the path. And I will add pip. That's okay. Um, everything else is fine. I'll go ahead and say next. The location for it, I'm going to install to all users. I'm also not going to add it to the environment variables because I want to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to change the location of it because I like having it in the root of the C drive because uh, it makes it makes what we're going to do in this one much, much easier, as you'll see. OK, so now that I've got that, I'm going to not actually associate files with this version of Python or this Python. Um, that's probably pretty good. Hit install. Say yes to any warnings about the installation process itself. And while that's running, I'm going to go, go ahead and open up PowerShell. Now this can be done inside of VS Code, but I am going to use PowerShell just to make sure that everyone's doing it because you know you might not use VS Code or any particular text editor in the future. Okay, so the key thing here is knowing that if I go into, I'm going to do it in my desktop just as a test, and I'll just make a new directory called test2, and then I'll cd into test2, and I'll clear everything out. And I'm going to do pip env install. And now what I'm going to do is Python and then the path as to where Python is. So I'll do C and it's Python 37 slash Python dot exe. Okay, assuming that is successful. If it wasn't successful, I wouldn't press enter there. I haven't done it yet, obviously. So I close that out and I hit exit or enter for this. And it should be using that version of Python now. And it's really just that simple. So now this virtual environment and the PIPMV will be using Python version 3.7. So if for some reason your project needed an older version of Python, this is how you do it. It allows for legacy versions as well. But unfortunately, PIPMV doesn't always work with all of those old versions because it's a little bit newer of a technology. So I think maybe 3.5, Python 3.5 is maybe the oldest one. Not even sure if that works, but something that does work is the virtual EMV, which is why you should know about how to work with different virtual environments. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new uh, PowerShell window here, and I'm gonna CD into the desktop again, and I'm gonna make a directory test three, and virtual EMV, I already have this installed on my system. If you don't, just go ahead and install it with pip install. Not, you don't need to do, um, pip env install, just pip install, so it works on the entire system. So I'm gonna go ahead and run virtual env, and then the name of it, which I called it test3, and then the Python version, which is dash p, and that is gonna be c colon slash python37, and then python.exe, and Notice that I'm not actually in that folder, so I'll just call it test four instead. And so there we go. Now this is gonna create, based off of Python 3.7, as we see, into that new folder of test four. So we see the into test four, and we see that I've got the lib and scripts and all that. And then I can actually run scripts activate, and we can do Python dash V, and it gives me that Python version. So if I deactivate it and exit, uh, it exits out of the PowerShell. And we can do it one more time. I'm just gonna do one last thing, and that is seeing the different versions of Python that I do have on my system. One of them is Python 2.7. I just wanna show you that that still works, and that's legacy code right there. So we go to CD de uh, desktop. This time I'll actually CD into test three. And again, we will do virtual env dash p, and we go c slash python 27 python.exe, 
and in this current folder here. And there you go. And then to activate it, activate a virtual environment with virtual EMV, it's just dot slash scripts slash activate. And then we got Python dash V. There's Python 2.7. So if I type in Python and do print hello world, notice the parentheses is not there. It actually works. If you try to do this same statement in Python 3, it will give you an error because that's not what print statements look like any longer. So that's different versions of Python, and that's exactly why I put it inside of this directory. If you put it anywhere else, it starts to get a little bit more cumbersome to find where that executable is. Um, so of course, it's not that hard because you just import sys, and then you would print out sys.executable, and that shows you where that Python version or that Python executable file actually is. So then you could call whatever that is with this virtual env-p. So since we do have Python 2.7 on here, let's just check to see, I'm gonna deactivate this and I'll do pip env and we'll go install and then dash dash Python. Yes, pip env is a little bit different. And then we'll do C colon slash Python 27 and then python.exe, we hit enter. PipMV is attempting to use Python 2.7.17. Seems like it's working. So PipMV run, let's just run, um, or let's go into PipMV shell, and then we'll go ahead and into the Python. And what do you know, 2.7.17. So PipMV did work in that case. But like I said, I mean, just because the Python part worked doesn't mean that all of the potential dependencies that that project has will work, like the pip installs, those, those may or may not work, which is why I showed you the virtual ENV stuff as well. Now I will say if you are starting with Python now, I don't know if you'll work with legacy projects for a while, but you might work with older versions of software, which is why we use virtual ENV. And those older versions are probably still really good. I mean, there's a lot of software that is super old. I mean, say what you want about Apple, but they still use Python 2.7 shipped into their MacBooks today, or I mean to Mac OS today in, in March of 2020. That's that's crazy to me, but it, it does happen. So legacy software is still definitely used all the time. So sometimes it's, it's good to know various ways on how you can go about getting it set up and all that. But of course, this was just a little bit more of a deep dive into virtual environments and to hopefully get you a lot more comfortable with using and setting them up because it's not really about Django. It's much more about every Python project you work on. And it just so happens that Django is the one that we sort of circled this around.